Greetings, and welcome to Dougie Dialogues. I'm Dr. Monique Mitchell, and we're webcasting from Dougie Center in Portland, Oregon. Dougie Center, the first childhood bereavement center in the United States, is recognized as an international leader in the childhood bereavement field for supporting children and families who are grieving. In these 30-minute discussions, Dougie Center staff explore language, trends, research, theories, and other relevant topics related to death, dying, loss, and grief. Our intention is to continue to shape the professional dialogue in the field, and we hope to spark some thought-provoking conversations along the way. Dougie Dialogues are primarily intended for an audience of professionals working to support children and families who are grieving. If you're looking for lived experience or support for your own grief, head on over to our Dougie Center podcast, Grief Out Loud, on iTunes or your favorite listening platform. Thanks so much for joining us and welcome to Dougie Dialogues. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Linda Miles. I am the Director of Community Philanthropy here at Dougie Center. And today we're gonna to be talking about um, intersections of fundraising and communications and marketing. And I'm joined with uh, by our communications director, uh, Cassie. You want Hi, to go <laughs> I am Cassie Beringer. I am the director of marketing and communications for Dougie Center. Um, I've been at Dougie Center, well, I think we both kind of had a similar path. Okay. I started at Dougie Center in 2009 and I worked um, here till 2013 and then I left for about five years and came back in 2018 and have been here ever since and Linda I think you have a similar yeah, similar yeah. I um worked uh at Dougie Center um in those same years and then left for three years to uh work at a university and um and then came back right around the same time as Cassie and Brennan our executive director likes to joke that she wooed us both back mm -hmm um to work for Dougie Center but it's really because it's a great place to work that's right <laughs> yeah. so um we want to talk about how we can how fundraising and development works together right Cassie so um I think that um I have learned a lot from um, working with um, with you in particular. Um, your work for for us has been just incredible, um, especially in the last three years, uh, as we've made so many changes with our website in particular, and um, and our communications have really, really um, been elevated um, uh, to a national stage in a lot of ways. So. Um, I, uh, and in my experience, I think it's just so important to, to work um, really closely with, with the communications and marketing folks um, in order to make sure that we're all um, collaborating, but, but the, the messages around um, what the mission is for the organization are really, are, are consistent, um, but also the strongest messages that we can share, and for me, with donors. Um, fundraising folks um we're, of course everyone at Dougie center is super busy all the time um slammed with with work uh we off but sometimes development folks could get really focused on um on the money and we need to raise money and are we going to meet our goals and um what um i can share first is that one thing i've really learned is that um the mission of the organization um, needs to, to to be uh, front and center. There's a saying in development that um, money follows mission. So if you're simply focused on the money and not uh, collaborating with your program folks um, and your communications and marketing folks um, to make sure that you um, are highlighting and spotlighting the mission, then um, it can become uh, really problematic. I do know there are other organizations where marketing um, and development can feel really siloed um, with uh, and without a lot of communication with one another. And um, and I I know from colleagues that that can lead to um, to just discord and challenges and things like that. 
Um, what do you think, Cassie? What's it like working on things like Giving Tuesday? Um, stuff yeah, like that? well, I mean, I kind of see myself, I sort of have my fingers in everybody's job, really. I mean, I, um, my goal as, in marketing is to increase awareness and support for Dagi Center. So that's could be, you know, for all of our development um, initiatives, but also for our programs, our local programs, our trainings, and our national programs. So um, I really kind of have, you know, I have to know what's going on in the organization, and then I can share that with, you know, each department. Oh, so and so is working on this. Let's do this. Um, this kind of goes together. And um, how you know we market is through a variety of ways, but it like what you were talking about before, we have you know our website, our social media. Um, we can do um, earn media, which is like public relations or working with news media, mm -hmm. um, printed materials, newsletters, digital newsletters. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a like a lot of things at our disposal. So um, for our like annual giving campaigns, like I think how, what's great is that we put the mission first and that's what, like what you were saying, what people want to, to contribute to. And then um, how can we, I mean, you can't have, we can't have our programs if we don't have a way to fund it mm -hmm. and we're not going to raise money for <laughs> just for, you know, fun. So we have to have a great program to raise money for. So I think they all really work hand in hand and putting together a campaign like that, it, it pretty much, it kind of, you know, falls in line pretty easily. You just decide, you know, most importantly is who is our target audience and who are we trying to reach? Because people, different people respond to different messages. So yeah. I think it's important to, um, to focus on who we're reaching, um, what they are want to hear as much as what we want to tell them and then what's the best way to go about, you know, getting that important message across? And yeah, I, I think that um, that is something that I really, really appreciate about you. Um, and that, um, <laughs> well, honestly, often I'm thinking, OK, this is um, A plus B gets me to this goal, which we need in order to fund the program or fund a new position or or. Um, you know, make sure we have as many people um, supporting Dougie Center as we can or stewarding our donors. Um, but so um, so we come up with ideas all the time. Development is like, well, we can do this, we can do that. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> one um, thing that I love about coming to you with an idea is that the first question you usually ask me is, who is the audience? And I have to go, oh, um, okay. <laughs> and I, have to think, I, I mean, I've thought about it, but I haven't thought about it in the very um, deliberate, detailed way that that you do. And then you often just ask us, well, what what is it that you're wanting them to do? How, um, what, what, you know, just tell me in one sentence, like how, what you want them to do. And um, you're able to like bring together some of that program and mission centered um, messaging uh, to help us get there um, to the point where we can inspire people um, to support Dougie Center. And um, I have, I think it's so important um, to have someone in your, in your uh, court who will ask you those questions um, in order to stay mission centered. Um, and that's something uh, I think we do really well. And um, part of big part of it is because um, you're often asking me, well, like, what's the audience? What's the message? And sometimes we will come to the conclusion of like, well, that actually maybe not be the best idea. We'll just shelve <laughs> that one until another day. Um, but you're open to hearing all of that. And um, I think that collaboration helps Dougie Center really be successful um, in um, sharing our mission and also sharing opportunities for support and sharing, um, you know, appreciating our supporters and our partners and thanking them and stewarding them so that they continue to support us in the future. Yeah. And I would turn that around and say, you guys, the development team are really the experts on the donors and you have the relationships with the sponsors and the individuals who are really supporting our mission. And so 
finding ways that best reach them is really something that I rely on you guys to share with me because um, I don't have as close of a relationship as, as you do. So um, that really helps me in, in working together to develop these messages. And not only the messaging is important, but how it's delivered. You know, if mm-hmm. um, we're working with the, you know, people who are, you know, kind of older generation, they might not be so much on social media. It might be something that they need to get in the mail um, that they're going to be become aware of the messages or or the event or you know whatever yeah. it is that we're doing. Um, but if we're working with you know kind of a younger crowd, um, I don't even know if they open their <laughs> mail. You know, it's it's going to be heavy social media. So yeah, um, yeah, I think definitely. And the I think Linda, you're such a, a, a amazing writer, and um, I really appreciate working with you as far as like your messages are can be so eloquent and um, you know poignant and really um, you know kind of cut to the chase about what what it is that we're doing and mm-hmm. and how important it is. So um, I definitely think um, collaborating is is so, so important. And yeah. also, you know, bringing in the program side as well. And um, that brings to mind kind of um, our biggest event, the Reflection Benefit and how um, you work so closely with program and how, um, uh-huh. and, and creating art with the kids and um, Rebecca, who does the art kind of coordinates a theme and then we can use that theme kind of as a sub theme for our event and it just all really works together nicely and yeah and um it just makes it so rewarding not only for the donors and the people who attend but for us personally and I and I really appreciate that thank you I I I mean same to you I, I just really appreciate it and it made me think about how often um we have been able to um kind of reuse things, not necessarily reuse, uh, but uh, when we work with program, we're, we're, we're always um, really deliberate about what we what we need and, and how it's going to work because they're also, everyone is so busy and they're really, you know, spending all of their energy supporting our families um, who are grieving, but we also um, take those opportunities because you and I can work together so well to say, well, okay, program has all of these grief feels like quotes from kids. Um, and here I have this opportunity for a grant to make a video. Um, and they want to, um, and I want to do an animated video of grief feels like, <laughs> uh, and, uh, but I was able to work with you with all of those, um, quotes and then the messaging around the quotes, um, to create a piece that's, um, actually shares the lived experience of kids through their words um, in a really um, adorable little uh, animation that we can then promote. So then we come back to Cassie and we say, okay, how can we promote <laughs> it on social media? How can we use it at an event? Um, and it, it really has to be like an open conversation almost all the time um, in order to be the most effective, but also for us to like um, just make the most of what we have. Um, and we're only, you know, you're only one person, you know, <laughs> you know? Um, and I have um, a small team that is, um, that are tasked with a lot of things. Um, so we need to make sure that we're always taking um, advantage of those opportunities to um, to build off of the work of each other. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that kind of made, I agree. And we'll have to link that video with, um, yeah. <laughs> but um, that also made me think about using the voices of the kids and teens that we serve um, through our events and um, our different campaigns uh, because, you know, our donors don't always get to sit in a group or don't get to sit in the lobby of the Deggie Center and hear all the, you know, what the kids are saying and all the amazing things that are happening. So we need to think of ways that we can bring it to them. And I think those quotes are just so, uh, you know, do that so well. And I I just love um, (laughs) hearing what they have to say and then you know, creating, you know, uh, 
social media posts around it or using it in an invitation or using it in a mm-hmm. you know brochure or whatever we're we're working on um, i do think that's so important to to you know like we were talking before involve program as much as possible mm-hmm. in the um, things that we're doing I also brought up another thing that you were talking about. There's so many, um, so many different subtasks within our titles, and um, we really have to be generalists in what we do. You know, in marketing, it's like I was saying before: it's website, it's social media, it's um, uh, right. public relations. And for you, it's the same. It's um, you know, annual. Um, appeals, it's grants, it's events. And, um, you know, for me, I feel like I'm not an expert in any one thing. I'm really more of a generalist. Um, and I know, you know, just enough about design to pull off something that looks passable. And I know just enough about our web platform to be able to, you know, do a few things that we want to do. Um, how do you feel about that, Linda? Like, I feel like you're a generalist too. Yes, absolutely. I uh, 100% agree. It's a bit about knowing enough about every piece in order to um, ha- uh, keep a handle on them and do it well. And I, I, um, I, I think that you are amazing with our website in particular. Um, but so I hate to think of you not thinking of yourself as an expert in in, um, those things but we do have to really um, have a lot of arms um, in a lot of places Um, and I think you know for everyone um, for all aspects of nonprofits but um, but definitely in fundraising the trend is um, moving very digital um, uh, communications in general or just um, what people expect in the world is is moving in the last 10 years anyway is very multi-channel and so in order to really have an effective campaign it can't just be a letter it has to be a letter and um coordinating emails coordinating social media posts uh maybe it's spotlighted in the newsletter maybe there's a video and an event aspect um and to do all of those things uh and have them under the same umbrella like for instance our 40th anniversary like you said reflection our benefit and auction this year we're doing um an in-person event and a live streamed 30 minute pre-recorded production so um we uh have to make sure that all of the elements in that are on brand so so to speak um and so much of that is the work that you do that's why we start really early um we always try to start really really early (laughs) um with what does the design for the benefit look like uh, so that we can have just those design elements to begin with and then what is the theme and like you said like what's the theme of the children's art so that we can connect that as kind of a sub theme to the event and um and then taking that even further and creating all of the web and social media elements that um, that go into that and the direct mail as well because some people do want um, you know are more likely to read their mail but also some people just need to see something like 15 to 20 times before they'll take action <laughs> um, and so it's uh, it can feel like a lot but um, but I I think that um, it's just really important uh, to be successful to keep you know, to keep all of that in our head. So I definitely feel like a generalist in a lot of ways. And often I think um, both of us feel like we have a lot on our plates. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Um, I've been doing this for 30 years, which mm-hmm. I can't believe. Um, but in some ways it's easier and in some ways it's more difficult. Um, you know, we're always having to learn new things and like social media did not exist back then. And um, and so it's amazing to be able to get our message out to an audience at free or low cost, um, but you have to learn how to do it. And so that's kind of can be a struggle sometimes. 
Um, but you know, when I first started, the only way to get the word out to kind of a broad audience was through either news media or advertising. And when you work in a nonprofit, you don't have the money for advertising. So, mm-hmm. you know, working with reporters and getting a, a article in the newspaper was so critical. But now, you know, we can kind of do our own thing on social media and reach a lot of people. So it's still important, but maybe not as critical anymore. So, um, you know, things change and we really have to fluctuate and kind of adapt, (laughs) which can be hard when you're, you know, older like me. Um, but, um, I think I'm sure you're probably have a similar situation. Yeah. I, well, I've been doing fundraising for about 22 years, over 20 years now. And when I started, it was, um, direct mail was critical and um and i'll just share with anybody who else is a fundraiser that direct mail is not dead direct mail works <laughs> um but direct mail now works much much better if you have this multi-channel um approach where people are seeing um your letter and then they forget about it and then they get an email and they're like oh i've been meaning to donate to dougie i haven't done that this year and maybe they respond to that email or maybe they see it on social media maybe they see us um on on TV, you know, there's, um, we still do have like opportunities like season of sharing is something that happens in, in Portland, um, or we have a month long um, a citywide campaign for nonprofit fundraising called the Give Guide. And, um, and so taking advantage of those opportunities um, and anytime that we are on, if our mission is highlighted on TV, then um, trying to utilize that in order to show donors um, with the kind of impact that they're having. So um, I think that that's, that's really important, but it's also something you really help us do, which is really great. Um, I think um, that, I know it's just been so great talking to you <laughs> this morning about all this stuff. I feel like we're really busy all the time and we don't often get a chance to step back and think about like oh well how do we work together because we're always like well is that done is that or you know how can we plan better all that um yeah. what's it like for you well I mean I feel like um we never not <laughs> work together I feel like I have I mean we haven't been in person but I do feel like I mean I I, I well I know you guys do things that I'm don't really have my hand on, but I do feel like I know what you guys are up to you and how can I help and how can I, you know, um, you know, use a design to make it maybe look sharp and yeah. um, how can I, we, you know, use that theme and, and work it in other ways. So um, I really, I do, I feel like, you know, we collaborate so much that we don't even think about how much we're collaborating. You know, right. it's just um, the natural part of how things go. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like sometimes people look at the Dougie Center and they see the program, you know, they think about the program and they think, well, there's a lot of people there who are obviously working with kids, um, with uh, their caregivers and their parents, um, helping people who are grieving, um, but they don't often think about um, who's behind the scenes um, <laughs> creating that, uh, the promotion and um, and the support that the Dougie Center needs um, in order for people to know about us so that kids will come um, and um, and know what it's like to, to be at Dougie Center, but also uh, if they choose to, to, to support Dougie Center um, in significant ways um, so that we can continue this work because we have this really interesting cause that you can't fix. It puts us in a position of really, really um, needing to always um, be promoting our work and always be um, asking supporters uh, to make contributions if they, if they would like to. And um, that's just kind of my mindset around it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we're not working with kids directly, but I feel like what we're doing is important too and um, important to our mission and help, you know, helping it along, I guess, Mm -hmm. um, from the background, which, you know, I'm totally fine (laughs) being in the background. (laughs) Um, You know, I I hope people are seeing our work and 
they are not thinking, you know, about us, but about the Dougie Center and, um, Mm -hmm. and the kids that we're serving. So, you know, I, you know, that's why I came back because, you know, both of us could be working for other organizations, but it's really special to be working with a a organization like Dougie Center who we can see our, you know, with our eyes and hear how much of a difference that um, Dougie Center is making in the lives of kids and families and teens and young adults. Yeah, me too. I think we're at time, um, but I think that's a great way to end it, right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's been really great talking with you today, Cassie, and and I guess we'll we'll get back to work, right? Yeah, great to talk to you, Linda. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.